Hey guys, Automotive Garage back today. We have a 2004 excursion back here. Man, I love the X's. Love them a lot, especially when they got a 7.3 on them. Of course, 6.0 is cool too. He had been to a big box front end shop place, and let's just say it uh, starts with the same name of a tire brand. You do the math. But they said, uh, yeah, you need ball joints on one side, other side looks good. Gave him a ridiculous price. This has been a couple of weeks. We've been working on the shop. I haven't been able to get to it. He said, that's fine. I'm not driving it that much. So got it here now. And I said, man, the ball joints on the other side are actually worse than the side they told you needed ball joints on. So they were lazy. Again, didn't fully diagnose something and see that the other side needed ball joints too. So uh, as time goes on, I have two more regular customers of mine call me and said, hey, I know you're busy. I stopped by another place and got a price on ball joints, and this was on a uh, 99 Cummins. They wanted over $3,000 to put ball joints and tie rod ends on the front, which there's not that much money in parts in that front end. Uh, ball joints and tie rods on this truck is gonna be in the ballpark of 600 bucks, 700 bucks in parts, maybe a little bit more, just depending. But uh, three grand, that's, that's a lot. So uh, I said, don't do that. Give me a little bit of time, let me get caught up and I'm gonna take care of you and it ain't gonna be no three grand. So then I thought maybe I should show y'all a video on diagnosing ball joints and checking this stuff out and showing you how it's not that big of a deal. It's not a complicated thing to do. And on these Dana 50 and Dana 60 front ends, it's not a big deal. You don't have to go get an alignment done. When you get this done, the, the, if you do your tie rod ends, all you gotta do is your toe on the front, eighth inch toe on the front, which we're not doing that on these, these tie rod ends are fine. This is not a complicated thing, it's easy. So what we're gonna do on the front end of this, we're gonna do brakes, his rotors are a little bit warped. So we're gonna do pads and rotors on the front, ball joints, left and right side, and uh, just basically check everything else out while we're here. So I'm gonna show y'all real quick how bad these are and how easy it is to check them real quick and see that you got bad ball joints. So now things to look for if you think your ball joints are going bad, uneven tire wear, which he caught this pretty early. I don't think these tires are that old, so he doesn't have any excessive wear on one side or the other. I think this side's about the same. It may be wore. A little bit more on the inside but it has it isn't bad but if you drive a truck with ball joints like this real bad you're going to have it the tire wearing very uneven on the inside because the, that tire instead of riding close to up and down it's going to be kicked way out and you can actually see it a little bit with the bare eye on this truck right here how bad these ball joints were getting so that's one thing to look for when you're driving down a bumpy road these excursions are pretty quiet they got a lot of sound deadening and the diesel makes a lot of noise too on them so you may not hear it quite as much if you were driving something quieter. You could hear that rattle. To If you're driving down a rough road, you would hear that rattle of that ball joint. Making all that racket. All right, so what you want to do is get your truck jacked up. You can do one side at a time or just go on and pick both sides up. You don't have to get it, but just you're looking for about an inch and a half, two inches off the ground. That'd be just fine for checking the ball joints. What you're looking for on these, it's usually going to be this upper ball joint. This wore out the worst. The bottom one will wear, but that top one is what's going to wear the most, especially when you start going with bigger, taller, wider front tires. And if you got offset wheels, it's going to wear it even more just because it's putting that much more pressure on it. So what you do is you get you a big pry bar. This is actually a big, long breaker bar that I have. I usually use it for this. You go under the tire right here, and you want to pick up on it. I'm going to try to hold all this still while I do it. I'm gonna show y'all the other view while I do it of the ball joint movement. So watch that upper ball joint. This is the side that they didn't even tell me needed ball joints on. You see that movement in that ball joint. Your rubber boots will be tore up a lot of times. Hell, that one, the rubber boot's gone. That one looks like it is too. And these, are not greasable. I like putting the greasable Moog in here. The only problem with the Super Duties is, is putting your grease fitting in on the top because you don't have enough room between your CV axle. So now that we hit on that real quick, go with Moog. That, that's, especially on these heavier trucks, that's the only way in my book to go. Somebody might comment and say there's another brand they like better, but go with Moog. Don't go with cheaper AutoZone ones, uh, Precision's. I think TWR is another brand that CarQuest carries. Go with Moog. 
even though a lot of their stuff is not made in America anymore, their quality control is pretty good still. And they'll stand by their stuff. And a lot of times I know they will cover some of their parts, and don't hold me to this, some of their parts they will pay for the labor to have it replaced if it fails uh, early. So um, go with Moog. We covered how to check your ball joints. We covered things to look for with your ball joints. And uh, this truck with the, with the tires not riding almost straight up like they're supposed to and riding like that, the truck almost feels a little squirrely on the road. Um, same way my Bronco feels right now because the front end is sagging with that twin I band because it needs coil springs on the front. But the steering feels unstable. It feels like the truck wants to go back and forth down the road kind of. So that's another symptom you have here. So I'm going to show you all real quick. It, it is not that big a deal doing ball joints on here um, or doing them on anything for the most part. Something you'll need to do this, which you don't have to buy. You can rent it for most part stores. I have to get you a ball joint for us. Uh, this is an OEM Tools. There's the part number right there. It's at 27089. I think this one cost me like 120 bucks when I got it, or I may have got it on sale. I don't remember. I've used it. I've abused it. Um, I use this for other things other than ball joints. This is really good for pressing calipers back in because you can put it on and just ratchet it real easy and it presses the piston of the caliper back in. Um, I use it for a bunch of stuff like that. Um, don't have to have an impact. Impact would be handy with using your ball joint press or you could you could hand tighten it with a ratchet or a breaker bar. But impact does come in handy. Other than that, basic socket and wrenches, heavy a jack. Uh, that's about all there is to it. The only thing would make this easier if I had it up on a lift. That's coming soon with the new shop if you want to check out the video of building the new shop. But that would be easier with the lift. It will we'll be there before too long. But right now we're still crammed in here and I barely got this one in the garage. All right, so let me catch y'all up real quick. What we've done so far is we removed our caliper, set it up on your leaf spring. If you're working on one of these leaf springs or hang it with a bungee cord or something, don't let it dangle by the brake line. I take the uh, bracket off for the caliper right here. We removed our rotor then at that point. So I think the uh, caliper bolts were 17s. 
the bracket bolts were 21s. Uh, your tie rod in here is a 21. The bolts for the bearing hub assembly that are right back in here. Yeah, those there, those are 21s also. So now we're at this point, everything is loose. We've got to take that snap ring off so the axle stays, bearing assembly comes off. And then what we're gonna work on then is breaking both of our ball joints loose, top and bottom. And then we're gonna whack on those a couple times with a hammer. That's all gonna come off and then we can work on putting the ball joints in. Washer. I think this one's plastic. Yeah, plastic. Not a washer in that order. So now all that's free. The only thing we got attached here is our ABS line going to it. That is an eight millimeter. It's gonna be garbage because your new ball joints will come on the Lord, undo this before I forget. This is your line for your automatic hubs here. Alright, so top bolt ball joint is all loose. We have everything removed now. We have to gain access to the bottom ball joint nut. Can't do that because the axle's in the way, so we gotta pull the axle out. So a lot of times this is gonna be a little hard to remove. Sometimes if this seal and everything is just totally wore out, it's just gonna pull right out, not gonna be any problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pry on the axle this way to help push this out so we're not getting rough with anything here. Now, with that removed, we can get to that nut now. All right, we're gonna remove the bottom nut, inch and five sixteenths. Got a snap ring on the lower one here. Took the snap ring off the bottom. You just have to pay attention to which way the ball joint comes in and which way it has to go out. So the snap ring's on the bottom here. And you can look down in here, there's that lip. So it has to come out this way. So this is when you play with all these spacers. You find out the combination that you need. The ball joint actually fits up inside of this here. So we're gonna put that there. So 
but we probably, yeah, we bottomed out into this spicer up here, but we did. So now a lot of times, once you have it pressed to that point, spacers in the press, if you got it that loose, a lot of times you can take your air hammer. You got your ball going out. You can see all the slop in that one. Now that that one's out, that's the one that we had so much slop in on the top there. Just slap war out. There's your two part numbers for your ball joints there. Upper, lower. Make sure it's the 8607T if you're four-wheel drive. If they send you the other one, I believe it's 86000. I'm not, not positive, but I think that's the other part number. Uh, it's going to be too long, and it's going to come in contact with your uh, axle when you put it in. So make sure you specify four-wheel drive. Make sure it ends in that T as far as the Moog part numbers. We'll get this lower put in, though. Sometimes you have to get a little creative because you don't quite have the right adapters sometimes to get these pressed all the way in. So right now I'm using this piece of steel because I can't use the round adapter at the top because it won't quite fit in the jaws here. Press the ball joint out into it like that. That looks like it. Let's make sure our snack ring goes on. Is it? I'm gonna go and put this grease fitting in. I don't like trying to get it squeezed in up under the trunk. I really put that in there. All right, so have both of your nuts handy for your upper and your lower. Get it hanging by one of them so you ain't gotta worry about dropping it. Tighten. There we go. I'm going to slide this top one up because it'll pull the bottom one in.
Yeah, see the top one's still loose. You're gonna tighten the bottom one up first. We're gonna torque these here in just a second. cotter pin up, which I can't see. There it is. Feels nice and snug, but it's not tight and in a bind. Got no play. Everything feels good. So now we're gonna put the rest together. So before I put these axles back in, I want to take a little bit of bearing grease. It helps lubricate that rubber part of this seal back here. It helps it all just slide in nice and easy. Because his seals are new. Somebody's done them not too long ago. The bearings didn't look old either, so I'm assuming. When somebody put bearing hubs on it, they put these new seals on. So a lot of people will stress over this seal right here. They wear out in no time. It's actually just a dust seal. This seals no lube in the axle. All it does is help keep something from getting in the tube there because there's a seal right there by the pumpkin. When you take one of these rear ends apart, that's what seals the fluid in. That's what keeps anything from getting in there further. Um, I usually honestly just don't worry about these. If you look at any Super Duty uh, 99 to 07, uh, unless they've just been done, this is going to be just like that. Uh, it's almost kind of pointless replacing it because they do this exact thing in no time right here. Attach the seal in. There's actually a specialty tool for it that I don't have. Never had it. Put plenty together without it. A piece of four inch pipe with the flare, not the regular four inch, but the flare makes it just right. For going over that metal ring there, you just hold it. You're not going to beat on it, you just tap on it. in there. You don't have to get crazy with it. Make sure you're in your axle and nothing's goofed up about it. All right, so two things I wanted to show y'all. This is one thing that gets overlooked a bunch of times is your slider for your brakes here. Now I already greased these up. I use the brake caliper grease. And uh, the goal is you just wipe it off. Sometimes you got to wire brush them, but the goal is you want this thing to slide nice and easy and be smooth. Because if you don't, that's one thing that'll make your brakes drag. Two, this ball joint press is really good for pressing this caliper back in. Put your old pad in here and just tighten it up and it presses both pistons in nice and easy instead of using a, a C-clamp or something like that. So we're going to finish putting this together. We'll catch up with y'all at the end. All right, guys, we are all back together. Got the new ball joints, new rotors, got new brake pads on the front. We checked his pads on the back, got plenty of meat left on them, no need to do it. He even fixed his EGR, uh, took that out, cleaned it, new gasket, new O-rings on it, a lot of soot built up in there like happens with these EGR valves. No code on the dash anymore, and uh, nothing on the computer, no soft code, nothing like that. So 
Y'all check this out. Y'all can do your, your ball joints yourself. Uh, go wrench you a ball joint press. It's not that hard of a job. It's pretty easy. So y'all like, subscribe, comment, check us out at Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble also. Got more videos coming on Power Stroke. We got a video coming out on Christmas of a present we've been working on for the, the girls. And uh, got more videos coming out on the shop build. So uh, y'all watch for the shop getting built. This is Automatic Garage. We'll holler at y'all later. Thank you.